is that someone can go from being a total stranger to being the most important person in your life. Fashion needs a new leader. Monsieur Dior. Fashion, film and literature inspire this month's TV series selection with an update of the 2005 film Mr and Mrs Smith, a series based on David Nichols' hit novel One Day and wartime fashion drama The New Look. Well, our TV critic Deepti Laurent is here to take us through it all. Hi Deepti. Hi Olivia. Now let's start with In Her Car. This is a Ukrainian drama that was shot in Kyiv just after the war began. Yeah, that's right. In Her Car, it's a European co-production between France and uh, between Ukraine and France, Germany, Sweden, Denmark, Iceland, Norway, Finland and Switzerland. The story starts in February 2022. Lydia, uh, the main character, is a psychologist. She gets in her car and drives from Kyiv to Kharkiv to get her husband to sign divorce papers. As she's driving, the first Russian bombs fall on the country. She decides to become a taxi driver for stranded Ukrainians fleeing from one end to the other, uh, one, one city to, to another, and also is at the same time trying to get to the bottom of her sister's mysterious death some years before. Okay, so the public and the private mix there. Well, the first five episodes getting simultaneous release across Europe on February 21st. That's just a few days before the second anniversary of the Russian invasion of Ukraine. Deepti spoke to Eugene Tunick, the Kyiv-based showrunner, about the challenges of filming in Ukraine during the war. Take a look. I'm not sure there's a lot of problems, of course, like uh, curfew. We can film only from 7 a.m. till uh, 10 p.m. maximum, because after that we have to go home and you can't see any person uh, on the streets uh, in, uh, in Ukraine in any cities. We had a lot of air raid alarms and uh, actors, uh, the crew, everybody has to go to the shelter and stay there until the air warning alarm uh, will end. <laughs> I hope that in her car uh, this series will be a sign for a lot of Ukrainian filmmakers, not only filmmakers but also other industries maybe, that uh, uh, Ukrainian stories and Ukrainian product is, uh, 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 has some kind of quality and it's needed in Europe and uh, the example of our series uh, could show that uh, we can work together and uh, much more better uh, better than with Russia. So obviously, Olivia, their war is a catalyst, was a catalyst for Eugene Tunic. And it's something he said in his interview uh, that uh, the series would not have been made if it had not been for the war. Uh, but this, the show is really created with care and deliberation in ensuring that the war doesn't overwhelm the personal stories, which are really the, the, the main um, idea of this series. Each episode features a new passenger and a new story. So you have one story about two sisters who are fighting over a man, or you have a French couple who've come to visit their son who's living in Ukraine. All these sort of ordinary problems that are suddenly upended by this war. Uh, it also captures the, the fear, the uncertainty and darkness that engulfed Ukraine uh, in, uh, and Ukrainians just after the Russian invasion. You have the, the sheer terror of bomb explosions, the paranoia of who's an enemy, who's not an enemy. There's no exaggeration here. This is just life. Um, and Anastasia um, Karpenko is uh, really incredible as Lydia. She's uh, very stoic. And uh, there's one episode that really strikes me where she has to transport her husband's much younger girlfriend um, across country, across the country, and, and, and turns out to be a very uh, surprisingly tender journey between two women caught in this war. Mm, sounds like a very powerful insight into daily life uh, there. Well, next, we're going to the uh, multi-hyphenate uh, actor, musician, showrunner, Donald Glover. He's behind this new updated TV series remake of Mr and Mrs Smith, which is out on Prime Video. Now, the original film starred Brad Pitt and Angelina Jolie, for those of us who remember it. Yeah, that's right. The film launched Brad 
Angelina, for better or for worse. <laughs> Brad Pitt and Angelina Jolie in the in the film played two spies who discover their they've been hired to kill each other. In the TV series, um, co-creator Donald Glover and Maya Erskine are spies John and Jane Smith posing as a married couple who must carry out violent operations. And as you guessed it, they eventually fall for each other. It's garnered a lot of positive critique, uh, positive reactions among TV critics for uh, the way it's updated the film in a very fresh, modern way. Take a look. You break the legs and I'll break the arms. Oh! We're going to have our gunfights and shoot em ups and explosions. Of course that's going to happen. But we really wanted to tone it down to like a two. So when you did something that was a 10, it felt like a 100. Hero said they're C students in an AP class. They're really not supposed to be here. You don't know how to ski? It was really important to us that the show felt global and grounded, but very bizarre, surreal comedy. What is it that you two do? We're software and engineers. Administer single dose, no casualties. Ah! What? Ah! You think if the company hadn't matched you, you'd be compatible? You're like sitting baby. underneath a shelter I made. Oh, I made this fire. Oh, I man, got you I this fish. Shelter, food, fire, water. No. Maybe. And as you see there, the series really blends um, action, romance, violence. It's also a bit of farcical comedy thrown in there as well. And uh, there are really great on-the-nose references in this show. The, the first scene of the first episode features a very good-looking couple who look conspicuously like Brad Pitt and Angelina Jolie <laughs> getting obliterated in a shootout. So that really sets a tone for this very not-so-subtle message about how different the TV series is to the film. And also, you could have seen in the, tra in the, in the trailer there... The protagonists are not cookie cutter, they're not perfect, they're scrappy, they're insecure, they're awkward, sometimes they don't know what they're doing, and it makes them very endearing. You know, there's a scene where they have to get rid of a body in a very gross way, and both of them are, can't do it because they're retching on the side. So it's just um, these kind of uh, comedic moments. I also love the uh, blink and miss them um, cameos by uh, super famous actors and actresses like Sarah Paulson, but also Alexander Skarsgård. Um, for me, though, perhaps the weakest part of the show is the love story itself. Uh, it develops very quickly, sometimes feels a bit contrived, um, in, in my opinion. OK, it looks like a bit of fun, though. Yeah. Well, that series is now in Prime Video's top five series debuts ever, so definitely a fan favourite. And another show that's being held by fans and critics as well is One Day. That's based on David Nichols' hit novel, uh, Romance of the Same Name, and it's out on Netflix. He's written this series as well. He was involved in making it. Yeah, that's right. He was involved in making this the this uh, this series one day, which is garnering rave reviews for its delicate, heart wrenching portrayal of love and grief. Unlike the 2011 uh, film starring Anne Hathaway and Tom Sturridge, which was you know universally panned, <laughs> um, this is uh, really uh, being quite well received. Dexter Mayhew, he's a charismatic posh boy who's had an easy life and he struggles to make his mark in adulthood. Uh, working class Emma Morley has had to fight for all her successes and the two meet uh, quite improbably on their last day of college and each episode traces one day um, in uh, over the next two decades of their slow burn romance. Um, take a look. He still makes with Dexter. He's doing all right for himself. Pizza Express would have been fine. After we met, I had a bit of a crush on you. So what happened to it? This crush. Back in the late 80s, it was all I thought about. And now? I thought I finally got rid of you. I don't think you can. So you mentioned the film version was a bit of a flop. You might ask why it needed updating with this series. What did you make of it? Well, um, it was uh, pretty incredible, actually. It's incredible chemistry between these two leads, uh, Leo Woodall and Ambika Mudd. Uh, Woodhull, you might recognise him uh, from HBO's The, the White Lotus. Yes. Um, Dexter, his character is awful, uh, he's arrogant, he's entitled, but Leo Woodhull ma manages to bring a bit of vulnerability to his character that makes him redeemable time and time again. Ambika Mudd, she's just incredible, um, a real revelation with her Emma, you know, she brings this sort of sarcastic humour and straight shooting. I also read that she nailed the accent, that leads accent in two days for the audition, so I, I imagine that's not easy to do no. either.
either. Absolutely not. <laughs> um, and also a lovely 90s nostalgia, great music like um, Lilac Wine by Jeff Buckley. You have the the, um, the verve as well, the costumes, the hairstyles really reflect um, each changing year. And I think ultimately the series format enables a greater uh, exploration of uh, these characters and the shifting power balances between them and how that changes their dynamic. It, something that really struck me in the book, but I think wasn't conveyed in the film. But a warning, you will need tissues for this one. It's very sad. Oh, OK. Well, a nice update for the rom-com there. Well, finally, it's a new month, and that means we've got new fashion drama in the form of The New Look. That's on Apple TV+, Plus, and it traces the rise of Christian Dior, Coco Chanel, and all their couture contemporaries during the Second World War. Yeah, it's quite a departure from your usual biopic. This takes us into the heart of Paris under Nazi occupation uh, during the Second World War, where Chanel, Dior, uh, Balma, Givenchy, Balenciaga and Cardin all tried to survive, sometimes also making questionable moral choices. Juliette Binoche plays Coco Chanel, who was already well established when the war broke out. She also controversially collaborated uh, with the Nazis uh, in, in various ways. Uh, ben Mendelssohn, he plays Dior, who was actually up and coming at the time, but he made gowns for the wives and girlfriends of Nazi officers. The series really encourages us, uh, encourages us to judge those decisions in a historical context, while also depicting how violence shaped uh, post-war fashion. Um, Personally, the French accents are a bit grating. Um, and apart from Juliette Binoche, just, there are no other French actors playing the leads. And I think that was a bit of a shame. Um, in any case, it's it's an interesting series. The new look is named for it's named after the the name that Dior gave his first fashion collection in 1947. It was a symbol of French hope and recovery. Uh, so it's a very unique take on fashion, and we've had a lot of fashion biopics re recently, so it's a very nice departure from that. I think it's worth having a look at. Mm, that new look, certainly an iconic uh, silhouette. I suppose it's, we'll leave it to you to decide whether it's uh, style or substance. Uh, Deepti, thank you very much for that roundup this week. Do check in with us here on Arts24 and on our website and social media for more arts, culture, movie and shows. We'll leave you with a peek at the new look that's just coming up. Your house will be magnificent. You think Dior is special? Real talent is turning your life into something bigger. People need to fear, dream, and need to live again. We can create a new world for them. <laughs>